citizens of the internet, you can call me Nitro Indigo, and welcome back to my extremely riveting let's play of Clanera for the Wii. In the last episode, Guardius unsealed Crest of the Moon Kingdom during the eclipse, and in this episode we are now in Crest of the Moon Kingdom. So, the gimmick of this level is that you have to find crystals to break these Guardius statues, and until I watched the Inverse Cast let's play of this game, I thought that the Guardius statues were carrots. But... Here's something I kind of forgot to mention a few episodes ago. In my mind, there's kind of like a jarring disconnect between the first and second halves of this game. Because the first time I played this game, I played it in two days. And the in the first day, I pretty much got up to 4-2 in one sitting and then I stopped playing. And then in the second um, day, not in the sef second, and then on the second day, I played the rest of the game. So I basically put down the game for a, a while, just while as the plot picked up. And I went the completely wrong way because I can't see apparently, which causes like me to like feel like the second half of the game is way different, more disconnected from the first half than it actually is. And there's some more phantom wow. island writing. And this place is also very pretty, and the crystal light effects when you walk past them it looks a bit weird, but it also looks pretty. And it's more obvious in the main room because this is another dungeon level, and I like that. And here are the collectible people; they look like. 80 sci-fi Z-Rust people for some reason and I fell into a pit and died. An autobiography by Nitro Indigo. Also, this music is called Untamed Heart and the first time I heard it actually made me cry. Unfortunately, I can barely hear it now because um, I have the TV volume turned down. But like... On the other hand, I kind of hated it for a while because like, I thought the piano and it sounded really, this piano solo it sounded really cacophonic. And by the way, the piano solo is actually, is playing, you've heard the piano solo before, it's the, um, well it's not literally the exact same music, but it's the um, mu first music that plays in the opening cutscene. And that music that played like during the narration about the nature of dreams and stuff. And also in the Japanese and Phantom Island dubs, this um, that line isn't actually, that, um, narration isn't actually that that opening monologue isn't actually narrated. I it's it's that it's like that in the English version. I'm not sure about like that it, what it's like in other translations. But anyway, what I'm trying to say here is that music in the plays when Kono was monologuing about dreams and stuff. Um, it's also the piano phrase it, in here. It has it has the same. It's basically it's reprised here is the best way to put it. But I also I always thought that bit sounded a bit cacophonic the first time I heard it. Well, not always because I think I've said that before. Actually, I'm just talking in circles now. But I'd like you to keep that in mind, basically, because like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, this game tells stories through its music. And also, I, I was. Playing Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time for the millionth time, ha ha ha, see what I did there, um, the other day. And I kind of realised that Pamela in this game is kind of like Lapras in that game because it's a, wa a sea creature, water creature thingy that can fly and takes you to the final confrontation, which is a floating place. A floating place, that is very, that sounds very strange, but you get what I mean. Hey, I'm not complaining though, don't make sense for once, that's good. Oh, and I got hit by a moo, and also I like 
Um, you can't see it right now, but I like that that weird curvy symbol in, uh, on the platform at the top. It kind of reminds me of that recurring symbol in Zelda games. So there was a Fred on Zelda Dungeon about it, the one that kind of looks like a jowl or something. I'm going to kill this rusty dusty gusty so I can get this dream crystal. By the way, is me calling them rusty tusty gusties actually funny? And also throughout this entire let's play, I feel like I've kind of been piggybacking on tessellating hexagons. Like I'm laying it out, structuring the episodes like in the exact same way he does, as in I'm doing the same number of levels per episode, like the exact same stages per episode that he is. Um, and I keep like referencing him constantly and I fell into a pit and died again. Let's play curse. And because like I did a lot better in the Joker battle when I went back to 5-2. I'll show that in the corner of the screen right now if you want to see it. But anyway, but like I, I need to find my own identity as a Let's Player and I think my mysterious next Let's Play, which I've already said on both Twitter and in the comments of episode 7, and if you watch the news in the future then me being vague about it won't mean anything, but I hope this next Let's Play I'm going to do helps me find my NC because it's again it's not very exciting to watch so I'll have to narrate over it but it also lets me give characters stupid voices. Uh, because I has lots of text in it, and it, and I haven't, I've never seen a let's play of it that I like, so I won't be constantly piggybacking, piggybacking on another let's player. And also, the game I'm playing next, it's a game which I think hasn't aged well. Anyway, this place kind of looks a bit like a church for some reason, because it has all the stained glass windows. I mean, it, this is supposed to be like a castle or something, but still. I see quite a lot of circular patterns here, I just noticed. But I don't really like how these, um, this, the colours of this pla these platforms, to be honest, because they just look too neon and they clash too much. Not really clash, they just, um, they clash with the background. And this game, this takes place at night, which further, um, fits with the theme that this game takes place over an entire day. Or at least that's how I see it, see it. And we can't go past the gold one just yet. There's that piano phrase I was talking about. And by the way, the music that plays during Klonoa's monologue about dreams and stuff is called And I Begin to Wonder, which is also um, a quote on the Japanese box art of the PlayStation 1 version of this game, which I'll show on screen. And I fell into a bit and died again. Someone should make a counter of this. I also like noticed while I was letting you listen to the piano part of the music that um, that every room has its own colour and this is the red room if you couldn't already tell. And speaking of the colour red, that actually has something to do with this mysterious next game that I'm let's playing that you will probably know what it is in the future, so... Boo! I was trying to do like say boo and do mysterious ghost wailing at the exact same time it came out as that. Also, I don't really know why this music is called Untamed Heart. Like, what is that supposed to mean? It doesn't sound like music that's fitting at all for the Magic Crystal Castle of Imminent Death. The Magic Crystal Castle of Imminent Death. The, what, where's the Imminent Death? Oh, this is where I fell. Take three for oh the third time be lucky I sure as 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 well I was trying to say hell and it ended up as well oh I have to double jump over that that's why and the crystal is green just like that green crystal which I think is the one at least the green crystal oh if I'm wrong then you'll show it so I won't have to correct myself by adding something and oh come on oh wait, I'm glad I survived that using my amazing Yoshi powers I people I don't I, people always say um, like. People pronounce, always pronounce them as like Mario and Yoshi, but I always say them as Mario and Yoshi. Is this just an accent thing? 
because I think it is. I mean, like, look, I've seen everyone pronounces it as Maria, so, like, the female version of Mario is Maria, so why wouldn't it be pronounced Mario? And I fell again! Also, this place kind of reminds me of Royal Road, the third, not the third, the sixth world of Kirby Triple Deluxe because it's like a castle and it's moonlight and the music that plays in the first stage of Royal Road is called Moonlight Capital even. The only difference here is that this isn't just a, a boss rush through some really boring looking um, gear rooms. And they do that in Kirby Planet Robot as well, please tell me they don't do that in Star Allies. And by the way, the only thing that will make me... I don't want to be spoiled for Star Allies, but I might play it one day. But the only thing that will make me buy an Nintendo Switch is a new Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game. Note, my opinions are subject to change because I am so indecisive that there is a piece of music in Kanoa 2 Lunatale's Veil which I think fits me very well because it plays in a place that is associated with indecision. Yeah, but I told you the Green Crystal was here. It's like foreshadowing sort of kind of-ish, maybe. I need to get one of these flying moves so I can get these dream crystals or not. Oh well, it's not, they're not essential. And now we can go back to that place we saw earlier. I didn't even realise that we were in a place we were, about, we were in earlier at first. But there's another one of those um, rules with writing on it. Is there a translation of any of Phantom Island anywhere on the internet? I don't think there would be. I mean, like, in Klonoa 2, there's a couple of signs which are clearly supposed to say on and off, and that's about it. And what are the letters they used in that alphabet? Looks like a letter from the Cyrillic alphabet, according to Tessellating Hexagons. I sort of know what the Cyrillic alphabet looks like, but my knowledge of any language that uses the Cyrillic, la uh, lang the Cyrillic language alphabet, yes. The, the, my knowledge of any language languages that use the Cyrillic alphabet begins and ends at Brothers from Full Metal Alchemist 2003, so... Yeah, by the way, if you're wondering, Brothers is the main theme of Full Metal Alchemist 2003, which is an anime that I really like, but it's uh, for teenagers as opposed to kids, so it has a very different target audience to this Klonoa game, if you're wondering. Full Metal Alchemist, Klonoa. Where's the similarity? If anyone can come up with a good similarity, please let me know. I mean, I could probably just make a joke, but I can't really think of one right now. But anyway, Brothers is the main theme of Fullmetal Alchemist 2003, and it's in Russian. There's your thrilling backstory. Even though all the characters canonically speak English, and um, it was made in Japan because it's an anime, but I'm not complaining, it's a very nice song. And there's also an English version of it that I was singing in episode 4 by... Um, the voice actor of the main character. Called Vic- the, the voice actor's called Vic Mignona, by the way. And also there are these disappearing platforms. They are made of tessellating hexagons. I know someone who would appreciate that shout-out. And I've already mentioned his name, so why am I being so vague about that? And while the castle looks really big from this angle, it kind of reminds me like when I was um, little, I went to Legoland Windsor, which was a bit of a disappointment, but I actually kind of liked the wind Windsor, the town around it, better than the actual Legoland because it was kind of rubbish. We'd be able to queue up for hours for rides that just honestly weren't worth it. And I remember seeing Windsor Castle, Windsor, Ca Windsor Castle, Windsor Castle, and being really like amazed by it because it was like so big. The joys of being young, like when we were young, that book for the Winnie the Pooh series. I remember once having like the Winnie the Pooh books, but I only read like a few pages of, of one of them, the first one. One of them, the first one. Yes, and this is a gold room, and this is the blue room again. I spoke too late. And now I need to make my way back to the cylinder room, which is not here. It's here, I want to say. And it's also kind of fitting to have a place called the Moon Kingdom at night. And I've actually went through this stage surprisingly smoothly, all things considered very relaxing game to play when you're in the right mood and this isn't a very long stage and I need to find an enemy actually I don't need to find an enemy I needed to go here so what was the point of having that bit there then was it just to show hey you've gotten I don't really get what the point of that Guardius carrot statue was and if you can't if it doesn't like 
let you if if it's not blocking anything and I fell which means I have to go all the way back up but hey it's no big deal it's not that hard unless it's just to show you hey once you've got the gold once you pop the gold thing go here and what was that on the ceiling oh it was like a ceiling orb a ceiling orb I mean very pretty the pretty kingdom of well, for some reason, crystals in video games, they always kind of remind me of, like, lollipops. If, or, like, at least the stuff... or other hard sweets. Like, this, the crystal that Galactonite is sealed in in... Um, Kirby Triple... Ax Kirby Triple Deluxe, and not actually Triple Deluxe. Um, all the games that he appears in, but I was thinking of Superstar Ultra, which I've never actually played because it's not on Wii U Virtual Console for some reason, and I've never seen a DS copy of it. And also, the texture on that egg is very low resolution but it's the Wii and I'm playing this on a Wii U so it's been upscaled to HD or well, not really upscaled it's in HD but it was not designed for HD so it, that's why it doesn't look good and that's also why the texture on Joker's eyes is very low res. Anyway we're at the end of the level Time in my extremely riveting let's play of Klonoa for the Wii, we shall be going into Vision 6 too. Until then, stay interesting! <laughs>